Hi there. Hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, over these last couple of months, the landscape of children's education has been required to pivot and adapt the greatest amount of change ever in our recent history, all with the view of keeping us safe and protected from COVID-19. You know, amongst many of these changes, parents and teachers have had to work together collaboratively and partner together with a view of supporting children in their distant learning. You know, we've spoken a great deal about the pressures that parents and children are feeling at this time. But until now, we haven't spoken enough about the pressures that teachers are feeling. So today we're here to talk more about this topic with the view of how we can best enhance our children's distant learning experience with our special guest, Amy Green, Associate Director of Teacher Education at Real Schools. Now, Real Schools exists to improve educational experiences of your child's school and to help everyone involved reach their potential by supporting teachers, um, students, and connecting the communities all around them. Now, based on best pr practice, Real Schools deliver professional learning for educators, enabling students to fully engage and benefit from their school's professional learning journey. Thanks for joining us today, um, Amy. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's always great chatting with you and I'm um, really grateful for your time as we know that you're very busy. Now, at this time, we know um, parents are not expected to teach or to replace the role of a teacher, however, mm -hmm. are asked to help observe and help support their children in their distant learning. Now, mm -hmm. this relationship requires a lot more investment from parents than just, I guess, the normal parent-teach interview per se. Um, mm -hmm. so, but, you know, we acknowledge that this is really hard for parents. Um, but this is also very difficult for parents, uh, for, for teachers too. Mm. So um, in your opinion, why um, or what do you think um, parents should be aware of at this time with regards to the pressures that teachers are expected um, and, and the pressures, I guess, they're expected to work under at this time? What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a big question. There's a lot in there. I think you know, our teachers are really doing a tremendous job um, with everything that's been going on and it's important to highlight that first. But one of the things I think we really need to be mindful of is that our teachers are, are dealing with something that they never anticipated. I think, you know, when you went through university, you would never have thought that your classroom and the way, you know, teaching would be taken away from you at all. And so we've asked our teachers to step into a role that they really haven't, haven't had any understanding of when it was first put to them. And so it's almost like this survival mode we, that teachers went through in the first place where they were just trying to figure it out at the same time as doing it. And that's probably why, you know, we saw at the start, there was a little bit of uncertainty about how it was going to fold out. Parents were anxious, students were anxious, teachers yeah. were anxious in that as well. And I think we've got to remember that our, our teachers are really doing the best they can with what they have. And yeah. for some of them, they've got great resources at their fingertips and others completely out of their control they don't have the same resources and and it seems to be that we're trying to almost put everyone under the same umbrella and we can't do that because of different schools and settings and locations and so we've got to really think that our teachers are, are doing what they can with what they have and we've got to keep in mind that for them it's an extremely stressful time and and almost a time where they feel like perhaps they're not doing a good enough job. They don't know if they're getting it right. They're not able to see their students every day. And as a, as a teacher myself, I know that I would be really finding it hard to navigate this because it doesn't matter how you're feeling or what you've got going on in your own life. Your number one job is to make sure your students are cared for and that they're learning when it comes to a school day. And right now that, that is extremely difficult to navigate and have as your priority with everything else that is going on and that you're being asked to do. Mm, yeah, and no mm. doubt, I guess a lot of parents um, have a great deal more more respect for for, for children's teachers. <laughs> um, I would imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, how have you actually seen uh, a shift in this mindset recently? I think I think there have been two things. One has to be the sense of humour that's come out of this with parents um, <laughs> sharing memes or stories or um, or little video clips that have been made about you know, what it's like to have your children at home all the time as students and not just children. And, and, you know, thank goodness we have teachers in our lives and what an amazing job they do. And parents who are desperate for schools to reopen just because um, the idea of teaching your child is such a, is a big undertaking. And, and I think the humor that has come with it has been really um, 
uh, has given us a sense of, of lightness as teachers that, you know, there is, there is a, a side where we can laugh at this and that's really important. Um, but then also, I think one of the other things that we've, we've come to realise and probably have more awareness around now is that it's a hard job and it's more than just rocking up from nine to three and, and doing a few fun activities or teaching a few lessons out of a textbook. And, Definitely. you know, I've seen, yeah, I've seen things where parents are struggling to motivate their child, which I absolutely can understand and connect with, but, you know, teachers will have 25 to 30 students in their classroom. They're trying to motivate as well as manage issues from the playground or students that might've missed lessons or kids going in and out of classrooms and then fire alarms going off and <laughs> uh, curriculum changing and all kinds of things. So I think definitely, if anything, what this has given us is, is the opportunity for parents to have more of an insight into what daily teacher life is like. And, and I think that can be a blessing in disguise, despite how it's come about. I think we'll get some good things out of that. Yeah. I think definitely there'll be a lot that will come out of this. And um, mm. as we just said before, if anything, if it just starts with the fact that parents have a lot more respect and understanding of what teachers go through, that's a good place to start. Anyway. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so you've had, you've had a career in education and a background in teaching and coaching. Um, so through that, you've helped support um, educators firsthand. Um, and you've actually got that firsthand experience yourself, what it's actually mm -hmm. like to be a teacher. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, what is the overall consensus of how teachers are feeling at the moment? I don't know if anyone's even asked that question um, in the media and it's something I don't think the media have spoken enough about. So yeah, how are teachers feeling at the moment? Yeah. Thank you for asking that. I think, um, you're right. I think we, we haven't really had an open conversation about how our teachers are genuinely feeling in this space. And, and certainly from contact I've had with teachers and some of the things that we've been able to provide them through real schools is that it's been a roller coaster for them. And some days are high and some days are low. And there's, it started with a lot of stress and anxiety at the beginning with, because there was uncertainty about where this was heading and what role they would play. And, and they've really tried to grapple with everything that's been thrown at them. But I think one thing we've got to remember is, is once they feel like they have a hold of it and there's a routine in place and they can work towards it, the rules change. Yeah. And then they, they have to adapt to that really quickly and then the rules are changing again. And I know that that's all about... Uh, you know, moving us out of different phases of lockdown and, and getting our, our country back to where, to where it was. But every time that happens, we're shifting the goalposts for our teachers. And so their, their emotions and how they're feeling at the moment is, is not, it's not stable for them. It's not mm -hmm. a comfortable place to be with things always uh, feeling like it could, it could shift. And so once they've got a nice routine with their class and they've set up their online lessons what, in whatever capacity that looks like and, you know, it happens for two weeks and then it changes again and they've got yeah. to readjust. Yeah. Yep. So they're being as flexible as they can be. But I think for, for, for anyone who knows when, when things are constantly changing, it's an unsettling place to be in. And so there we've got to understand that their feelings and emotions around that are, are probably not as um, positive as we, as we, you know, would like to be feeling on a day to day mm. basis. And so there's, there's an element of kindness we've got to be putting out there for our teachers in this space. If anything, I guess everyone is sort of working um, in a much more adrenalised state um, than actually Hugely. a relaxed yeah. state of mind. And um, everyone works under pressure differently. Um, yeah. Some people work better under pressure, others not. Um, but, yeah, it's something that um, no matter what, what scenario you're in, you have to be able to, to be nimble, to be, to be able to pivot. And definitely it can be a bit more confronting and a bit more difficult for people that are just not comfortable in that sort of environment. But now... Mm. You're personally passionate about education um, and you've also understood firsthand the pressures and challenges and it's just the extreme just workload um, that mm. comes with being a teacher and or I guess just an employee of the service industry overall. So in your experience, um, what do you see as being the major challenges that teachers are experiencing at this time? Um, and I guess coupled with that that parents should be aware of as well mm. um, I think this is an important lens to put on at the moment yes our parents are um uh, have been struggling a lot but also what yeah. what are the teachers going through that parents should be aware of yeah I think the, the first thing that comes to mind with that question is really as a teacher one of the things you aim to do first with your students is build connection and relationships with them and you know we weren't at school very long with our new classes and students before this before COVID-19 happened. So before our students were, were taken out of the classroom. And so 
really we'd only had a few weeks to establish those relationships and connection with our students and then from there move into learning and and it's like re redoing that all over again um connection in a classroom looks very different to connection in an online platform and that's why you might see teachers asking students to do little things like share a pet one day or have lunch together or you know talk about what it is they did on the weekend and they're all things that we do informally in classrooms where we build connection and relationships and without that learning can't happen we can't focus on learning if we don't have a connection with our students and that's probably been one of the biggest things i think have been that it's been on teachers minds you know they can't have a conversation with a child whether on playground duty they can't have a quiet conversation with them in the classroom they can't have a running joke with them as they would when they're teaching because those opportunities just aren't there and so that's probably been one of the biggest losses that teachers feel that they've missed out on and when it shifts into learning and online and face-to-face and -face time with it being so limited there's there's pressure around finding the balance between you know is this about building connection again with my students and letting them know that I care for them and that that I have their you know their best interests here or is it about pushing the learning and curriculum and, and, the, and the agenda of that which seems to be coming from a few different places and for a teacher I think that's a really hard internal struggle to be going through because we know within our classroom we have opportunities to just know our students as people and when we're pressed for time it seems to be the curriculum that comes to the forefront as the priority especially around um, teaching and, and learning around essential skills like English and maths and making sure that that's still happening and I think for parents it's, it's important that they understand that our that our teachers always drive with connection first Mm -hmm. And that might be why at some, sometimes we feel like that, that learning isn't happening or they're not learning enough or there, there isn't enough going on. And it's because so much of it happens um, in an environment that is safe for our students. And at the moment, with everything that has shifted, they too are feeling stressed and anxious and like there's, there's an element of uncertainty and unknown for them. And so teachers are good at reading those cues and knowing how much to push or, or how not um, and I think, you know, we can't work at the same pace as what we would if we were in a classroom. We can't, completely different we can't, timing. Yeah. it's completely different. We can't be teaching, uh, you know, a series of five lessons that might go over a week in a week anymore. You know, that's going to take two weeks. It's going to take longer. It's going to take shorter lessons. It's going to look completely different. So our teachers have had to adjust that really on the fly and learn and respond to the feedback they're getting from their students as they go. You know, they're in a completely unknown territory, but nothing's been taken away from them. And I think mm. that's been one of the hardest things to grapple is that we've said, do it differently with less time, but still do everything just as well as you would in a classroom. And I, I just think that's unrealistic for our teachers to be, to be doing and, and for, for parents to be expecting it all to be a hundred percent the same, which I, you know, I don't think anyone is, but that's why it, it does look different and it might feel like less is happening when in actual fact, it's about what is going to be the most effective, what's, the most um, efficient and useful way we can use our time still while our students feel connected to their teacher and their peers and are learning. Mm. And speaking about this connection now and the phasing back in um, from, I guess, the distant learning and as we sort of phase back into the classroom, um, I'd like to just maybe sort of expand on that a little bit because mm -hmm. each state and territory is different over the yeah. sort of weeks and months um, and we won't sort of go into that sort of in, in too much detail but I just love to understand yeah. from the perspective you know teachers have been used to seeing their students face to face each, each day via um online via zoom um but you know just talk talk to us a little bit more about I guess this phasing back in and then in sort of keeping that connection um what does that look like is that harder for teachers now as well and the fact that they are going to start to see their, their, their students face to face and then they've got to some days then jump to to that to an online platform i don't know what mm. are your thoughts i mean again we we just don't know we don't we don't know what it's going to look like and how it's going to work for each uh, individual child or school or state with it all being so different and we've got to remember that we're all learning as we go throughout this together and that's important to keep in mind but i think our students are going to be so it's always going to be like the first day of term all over again once they're yep. all back at school they're going to be excited they're going to be wanting to see all their friends cool. they're going to want to jump right into it yeah it's going to be full on so there probably will be an adjustment period that you normally go through at the start of the year where it's I think when it when the transition happens and 
and it's phasing into some time at school and some time at home, you know, what's really going to help with that is going back to consistency and routine and, and having students know this is what learning looks like, this is what's expected. And our teachers will really be pushing for rebuilding that connection and understanding of what learning looks like in a school, but also relationships are important. They've got to have fun, but they've got to have time to reconnect and debrief what's been such a massive experience for all of our students. And it's okay if, if some days we feel like we need to spend more time just talking about what's happening or, or has happened, or um, we need to go over different things because we've got different students coming in and out. And it might mean that learning will again look different because some students are in class and some are still being kept at home. So I think as we as we shift into this new phase, we've, we've got to understand that teachers will need time and space to navigate what that looks like for their own unique school and classroom setting. But at no point will it, will it be at the sacrifice of what our students need when it comes to learning and connection and, and relationship and knowing what's happening next in their own kind of goals around teaching and learning. Okay, I've had a couple of thoughts and I've got to hold on to both of them to make sure I get my thoughts <laughs> <laughs> holding on to these. The first one is I guess that a lot of families have probably now got into the groove of being used to the homeschooling now and they're going to have to jump out of this. Okay, well, yep. we've got used to this now. We're used to our routine. You said you told us to build a schedule and you told us to do all these things and we've been doing that and we're in that schedule now. We're in that flow and now we're going to have to sort of start breaking that to sort of integrate back into the classroom. So there's that part of it. But the second mm. part I really wanted to ask and speak to you about was the fact that maybe I'm trying to say this in the most diplomatic and nicest way possible, but not all parents maybe have had um, a great experience with homeschooling. And um, in some instances, maybe you've put their biz businesses or their, their jobs first um, for yep. job security. Um, not saying this is the case for everyone, but there is, cases out there mm -hmm. um and that means that the children's education has suffered as a result now this is going to put a lot more pressure on teachers once the kids are back into the classroom once they sort of will be able to well i guess as an open question will parents be able mm -hmm. to tell the difference are they is, is this going to put, put more pressure onto the teachers um for them to be able to pick up the slack where the parents um have maybe um found it difficult and and, and maybe didn't sort of keep keep the education sort of rolling as it should have you know what, I don't, I don't think so. I think everyone's done what they needed to do. Some families needed to focus on their work and their business because it was about, it really was about survival. And some had a better environment or not better, just a different environment where they could focus on learning. But some, some environments where that was possible, you know, some students might have engaged in that. And we know as teachers anyway, in a normal classroom, students come from all different backgrounds and different abilities. And so we would be differentiating and changing our curriculum to meet students at their point of need, wherever that might be. And this is no different. Um, I don't think that we would have seen students have massive leaps and bounds and students coming in where they have regressed or not made any progress. I don't think that'll be the case at all. I think what we'll find, if anything, is that we have students who are probably more willing to learn and have a different mindset around being in a classroom because they had it taken away from them and, and they weren't there. And, and so their opinion of school might be different. I think that's probably going to be the most positive thing. I think if you were a parent and you had to prioritise your job, that's okay. I don't think any, any teacher at all would hold you... Um, ransom for that you know and and kind of think that you've done a disservice to your child you haven't at all and teachers will be able to to just meet the student at whatever point of learning it is that they're up to and and go with it I mean there is there is a there is that phrase and and you know being put out there where we've where we haven't met students needs educationally or where they've fallen behind and I don't think that's the case at all I don't think we need to be saying parents haven't done a good job or teachers haven't done a good job we've just all done what we were able to do. And when we're mm -hmm. back in classrooms Absolutely. and back to some kind of normality, we'll just get on with it. It's yeah. okay. And yeah. do you think at any stage that the feeling of isolation has um, affected students and teachers at any time in the last few weeks at all or not? I think being isolated has affected everyone. Um, you know, teachers are very community based when it comes to having each other in, in being able to have conversations with each other, talking about their students, talking about lessons, 
staff room conversations. We're very, we're very much a, a kind of culture where we do talk and bounce ideas off each other all the time. And even just to have that missing has been a huge isolating impact um, that, that teachers will be carrying with them. So even though, you know, for everyone, you might've been working at home and you've had those relational connections with people you live with, we need, we do need varying levels of connection as humans. So we also need connections uh, are beyond our immediate family. We need connections with community. So that is, that's what happens in the workplace. That's what happens in sporting groups. And so there's, um, I think if you, if you're, if you're a teacher or a parent or even a student, you're feeling a little bit lonely, but you're surrounded by people understand that we don't, it's not just loneliness. Isn't just about being isolated. It's actually about different connections that we feel. So you can be lonely and still be surrounded by people because you might be missing your colleagues or you might be missing just having children in your classroom or you might just be missing having some kind of conversation that's related to work. All of those are important to us as people and we need to know that isolation has taken many elements of that away. Mm. That's okay. And, you know, I guess you know, all difficult times require um, for us to grow and adapt to new scenarios mm. from what was previous and to what what it is now um i guess some teachers have really had to embrace and adapt um i guess to to new new found ways through through technology to their teaching methods um and applied in a way to help engage that connection with the students as you were just saying mm -hmm. so do you like have any tips for teachers um and parents how they can better use technology at this time given that we are not jumping straight back into the classroom that we are in this sort of transition transitional phase at the moment mm. I think one of the you know the one of the most it seems like an obvious thing to say but really keep it simple um, I think we don't need to be over complicating it with programs and going this way and that way and you know having multiple tabs open or doing different things I think we want to reduce the stress for everyone and so that is about simplicity um, explicit teaching in terms of just one do one thing well rather than a hundred things differently um mm -hmm. we've got to understand that it's this whole online teaching framework for our teachers and students and parents is is brand new and so we want to be able to keep it as simple as possible and so i would still be encouraging things even though it's online learning you know just as we would do in school using a workbook or um, having one platform that students use and submit work on I think that's probably the best way to navigate it is be kind to yourself you know if it's too much and your your child is getting flustered and feeling stressful step away it's yeah. okay contact the teacher and say you know what we didn't do so well at this today we did this instead or we had a conversation about this or you know we couldn't access the IT part of it so we decided to do this that's okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this um I guess next question is, um, I guess, more for the parent as opposed to, mm -hmm. a teacher, but how can parents, um, whilst they are still um, required to do some, um, assist in some distant, lear distant learning, if I can get my words out, yeah. um, how can parents make sure that the, the day still runs as smooth, smoothly as possible, given the kids are going to be sort of maybe in yeah. and out of their, their daily schedules now? Mm. I think, you know, I think it's for parents and teachers it's consistency I think is going to be essential for our students to succeed in this space and for everyone. So consistency and routine. And I know, like you mentioned, you know, we were told to get our schedules in order and, and do all of that from home and let's keep those things going. Let's, yeah. let's keep the same kind of thing going. So when students are at school, they know what's expected of them when they're at home, they know what's expected of them. And that helps to alleviate any kind of ambiguity or opportunities for stress or worry to arise because they've got certainty even in the smaller things. And I think we've got to keep that going as best we can. Mm, how do, how do um, I guess, teachers keep the consistency of what children are learning to ensure they're given enough learning so they don't fall behind? Is this, is this a greater challenge for teachers at the moment? I think what we'll find for teachers, so if you're a teacher, it will be having a better understanding of what's really essential in your classroom and the essential learning that needs to happen. Um, you know, we have, our days are filled with all kinds of different things and activities and learning experiences for our students. And it, and it might just be that some of them we have to let go of and some of them we realise aren't maybe as important as we thought they were or they don't need to happen. And for a period of time, we'll just need to focus on what the essential learning is and what the next best thing is for our students. So I don't think it'll be a matter of any students falling behind at all. It'll just be tweaking maybe what we normally would have done 
because our time is limited. So there won't be gaps. There won't be students who haven't achieved. There won't be students who will be massively impacted by not attending school for a few weeks. You know, it's, it's not going to be, I think, the worst case scenario that we might be hearing it is. We'll adapt, we'll be flexible, we'll focus on what essential learning needs to occur and then our students will we'll get to a point where, you know, it'll be back to normal and we'll be back doing everything in a classroom we would have been doing. Mm. And during this transitional phase, as you mentioned before, the kids are going to go back to school. They're going to be so excited, of course, to to see their friends and and sort of feel that they do have some form of normality again and Mm. um, Mm. to sort of jumping between classroom and homeschooling. Um, So how with that transition phase, um, possibly sort of through to, well, we don't know how long this is going to take, I guess, but, Mm. um, you know, but during this phase, how can we sort of help keep kids sort of um, motivated? throughout this time yeah good question yeah so I think we've got to remember that learning does need to be fun but it needs to be relevant so there has to be ways that we weave in what the essential learning needs to look like but also in a way that kids can connect to so you know it could be things like if they've got a a friend who isn't at school on the same day as them they can write them a letter and then you're teaching English skills, but through a letter. It could be through playing playing games where they are leaving things behind for students the next day. So almost like a scavenger hunt type thing. Yeah. I would be, that's just off the top of my head. So I don't know if that's like something that you can weave in, but I think as, <laughs> as teachers, be, be creative in how you can leave um, or build connection for students, even though they're not always in the same room. That's what students will be motivated by, you know, did my friend do this for me? Is this going to be here? We're working on this group project, even though some are at home and some are at school. So provide ways for students to still stay connected Mm -hmm. and for learning to be relevant. And I think that they'll want to partake in that. Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. we've um, sort of looked at everything from a different perspective uh, today. I think it's sort of been quite refreshing for our audience um, and ensuring that we are sort of being empathetic um, to mm. all parties at the moment, empathetic to, to families, working families, yeah. empathetic to the children and empathetic um, to our teachers, which do a brilliant job. So how would you, I guess, summarise our key messages or the, the, the key messages from the chat today? Mm. I talk a lot to teachers about the idea of kindness and I think that that really has to underpin the entire journey that we're on right now. So, you know, being kind to yourself is really important. Knowing that you won't always get it right or that you won't always know the answer or that sometimes it won't go to plan and that's totally okay. You know, parents know that some days your students will, or your your children will thrive and be on top of all their learning and be excited. And other days they might not be interested. It's the same as in the classroom and that's okay. Um, And I think we've got to send that message to our students too, you know, we're all doing the best we can with what we've got right now. No one knows what's happening. It is really uncertain times. So just be kind to yourself no matter what is happening and, and know that eventually we're all going to come out of this and learn a lot and we'll be back to probably not where we were, but maybe a better place I'd like to think. And that if we work together, if we communicate, ask questions, you know, rather than make assumptions or fill in our own story, we've got to be open and connect with each other so we can work in real partnership. And, and that's got to be the big key message here, kindness and connection. It's got to drive everything we do. And so do you think that that is, I guess, the main thing that, we, that everyone will take from this time? Like, what do you think the biggest lesson is everyone will sort of take from these last few difficult months? I think, you know, I think some people will have given themselves permission to slow down and reflect on perhaps how they were living and, and, and some changes they can make in terms of being able to better look after themselves and, them, and their family. I think that will be one shift we'll see. I, I don't know where, about where you live, but where I live in Canberra, certainly I'm seeing a lot more people outdoors and getting their um, time in fresh air and sunshine. So I think if that continues, that's a massive positive and I think some people are just really eager to get back to the way life was. So everyone will take their own message out of this and, and their own kind of experience and connect, connect it to with where they are. But I think we will see some changes. Yeah. Be good. I just think in, in, um, in retrospect, looking back, I think that um, whatever your life was before we sort of went into this COVID-19 era, it's really put your out the, that scenario under a microscope really and you're already (laughs) in a good scenario 
maybe sort of home isolation and everything has sort of been heightened it and made mm. you appreciate that scenario more if there was challenges maybe these challenges have been heightened and everything else but either way you know, yeah true yeah. <laughs> either way you know i think we've all sort of taken something from this time but i um, definitely want to show our appreciation for all the teachers who do an incredible job and yeah, um you know a lot of them have their own children as well so whilst they've, they've been teaching their they've been having to sort of navigate their own children's uh, distant learning as well. So this one's for the teachers. Thank you for all the incredible work that you do do. And this is us yeah, showing that support. Now, I'm um, Amy, if anyone's got any other questions for you, whereabouts can they reach mm -hmm. you? Yeah, and so you can find me at Real Schools. So over at Real Schools, I am Associate Director of Teacher Education. I lead Real Schools Academy. So that's kicking off on August 3rd, which is a whole bunch of courses for teachers from anything from teaching to learning to self-care and well-being and everything in between. Um, so you can find us over there. You can email me at amy at realschools.com.au as well um, on all socials and come check us out. It'd be really great to see you there. Awesome. We'll include all of those links in the show notes. Really great Thank to you. catch up and uh, can't wait to chat with you again soon. Take care. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.